Hi, this is the tutorial for the introduction to Quantlib Part 6. In the tutorial last time, I've shown you how to price a core options with the drum diffusion modeling in Quantlib. In this tutorial, we'll go back to price the options with the threshold modeling again, but instead of using the analytical method, we'll use the Monte Carlo simulation method this time. So let's talk about how this Monte Carlo simulation method works. It involves four steps. The first step is to generate a large number of random paths for the stock price with certain not normal distribution. The second step is that for each generated path, we calculate the payoff of the options with certain strike price accordingly. In the first step, we take the average of this payoff to estimate the expected payoff at the maturity day. Finally, we discount the result back to obtain the option price today. As you can see, the last three steps are some typical computations that we may find in other methods. What makes the Monte Carlo methods unique is the first step. To implement the first step, we need a random number generator to generate the random variable under the distribution that we are interested in. In Quantlib, many kinds of random number generators are provided. These pseudo-random number generators are close to truly random, but the drawback is that we may need to simulate more than 10,000 samples to get closer to the target distribution in order to obtain an accurate option price result. Alternatively, we may consider to use the low discrepancy number generators that are also provided by the quantum. These generators can help to produce the target distribution with much fewer samples, but the drawback is that the number of sequences are deterministic, meaning that you will get the same sequence every time you run the program. To make our life easier, Quantip have wrapped the following random number generators classes to produce the normal distributions that are useful for the option pricing. One is for the pseudo-random, and the other is for the low discrepancy. Now we have the random numbers. Next, we should consider how to generate a single price path sample. We know that the stock price follow the geometric boundary motions that satisfy the following stochastic differential equations with this analytical solution. In Quantlib, it used the technique called unit discretizations to approximate the geometric Barnier motions. Intuitively, if the number of time steps increase, then the delta time t will get smaller, then the step price will get finer, and therefore the result will get closer to the analytical solution. On the other hand, Increasing the time steps will increase the computation time. There is a trade-off between the modeling accuracy and the computation time. Therefore, we should determine and specify the number of time steps to run the Monte Carlo simulation method. 
after we look into the way we generate a single price path, then we should determine how many number of price path samples to be simulated. We know that given the initial stock price at time 0, the final stock price at time t will follow the log normal distribution. By the central limit theory, increasing the number of samples should reduce the standard error of the estimated expected stock price at the maturity day and also the estimated expected payoff and therefore give us the result that is closer to the true results or closer to the analytical result if the analytical solution is available. Again, the trade-off is that more computation times is required and therefore we should determine and specify the number of path samples to run in the Monte Carlo simulation method. Now let's see how to plug in the Monte Carlo simulation method to the option pricing using Quantive. Search the Vanilla Options Engine The Monte Carlo simulation method for the option pricing is here. If we do not specify which random number generator to be used, then the pseudo random generator will be used by default. Like the analytical pricing method, we should specify the stock price movement process. And then, like what we just gone through, we need to specify the number of time steps for each price path sample. We should either specify the number of timestamps for the whole period or per year basis, but not both. Next, this price method provides two options. These options may help to make the generated price path closer to the geometric branding motions and also make the final stop price closer to the target distribution with fewer time steps and samples. I will not go through them in details here, but you may try enabling or disabling these options and see the effect. Next, we need to specify the number of path samples to be simulated. We should either specify the number of price samples for the whole simulations or specify the target standard error that we want to achieve, but not both. And if we specify the target standard error, then we may also specify the maximum sample to try before to give up the target. Lastly, for the pseudo random number generator to generate different sequence every time, we may specify a random seed here. This is the original structure for the analytical methods. And this is the modified structure for the Monte Carlo simulation method. We will compare the computer results between the Monte Carlo simulation methods versus the analytical methods that we have done previously. So now let's start modifying the previous program to do the option pricing by the Monte Carlo simulation method. We first construct the Monte Carlo pricing engine by specifying the additional parameters that we have talked about. In this example, for the random number generators, let's use pseudo random. For the price movement process, let's use the Black Scholes process. For the number of time steps, let's set it as 10. For the number of path samples, 
let's set it as ten thousand, and then hundred thousand, and then one million, and then we compare how the results converge with the increase of sample paths. For the seek, let's use the built-in function in Quantlib to generate the initial seed, which is based on the system clock. After constructing the pricing engine, we then assign it to the option object so that we can call up the pricing function to do the pricing. By the way, we may comment out the jump diffusion pricing code in the last tutorial to make our results comparison more clear. Next, let's write the output header to make a table of simulation result with different number of path samples. And then let's write the simulation result to the output window. And then we repeat the code for 10,000 and 1 million path samples. Okay, now we are ready to compile the code. The compilation is success. Let's run the code and see what happened. Here is the option pricing from analytical method that we have done in the previous tutorial. And here is the option pricing from the Monte Carlo simulation method. As you can see, the Monte Carlo simulation result gets closer and closer 
to the analytical method, and errors is reducing as the path samples increase, but the computational time is also increased. Okay, that's all in this part of the tutorial. We can see that it is easy to switch between the pricing engine, between an analytical and Monte Carlo simulation method. We also gone through some considerations that are unique to the Monte Carlo simulation, such as choosing the random number generator, the number of time steps, and the number of path samples. In the next tutorial, I will talk about the option pricing by the Monte Carlo simulation method with jump diffusions. That will be the most interesting topics so far because there is no implementation for this in the core nib. And we will achieve this pricing by inherit the price movement process class and then adding the jump diffusion code into the derived class. That will give you a deeper look into how Quantip implement the Monte Carlo simulation method. See you next time.